Hello. How's it going? Hey. How's it going? Hey. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Nexus Draft House. I am Sahara Drac, and I am with my my lovely, my Vanna White of the show, Ryan, <laughs> Lord of Ascension Tower. Hey, everyone. Just as good looking. Even Thank like you. I'm talking like in their prime too. So, oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> the compliment. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so Nexus Draft House is a show all about drafting. We're on our 18th episode, and I didn't update the stream title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, production value. Production value. So while I work on that, um, we uh, talk about drafts of all kinds. Um, like I said, this is our uh, 18th episode now, so it's a good time. Um, it's all about um, just helping people understand drafts better for themselves um, from pro perspectives and uh, analyst perspectives and also uh, uh, learning basically like when you're watching drafts the the commentators are, are kind of analyzing the draft as it happens but they don't have a whole lot of time so it's a good 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 platform for just kind of deeply exploring drafts and draft theory and all that stuff because drafting is very important and we have an awesome guest with us tonight and his name is David Rothelcopter young how's it going man it's going all right nice to be here nice to finally be on the show yeah for sure yeah. Welcome. and uh what have you been up to lately i know you've been uh you uh been going to school and stuff but what else yeah so we finally finished finals and i actually had my first stream since like forever mm -hmm. <laughs> yesterday for the patch and that was a lot of fun i'm gonna keep doing that <laughs> yeah you, you had a long stream yesterday right yeah, uh, I streamed for like anywhere from like fourteen to sixteen hours yesterday. <laughs> nice. That's a that's a that's a substantial uh, stream. So, uh, yeah. I mean, you had plenty to go over with the new patch and everything. So there was plenty of stuff to explore. I'm sure. So that's cool. Yep. Awesome. Uh, what do you think of the new patch so far? Um. So like, I was talking to Ryan earlier about it, and basically, as like the, the day progressed, I was like, Ragnaros is okay. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the night, I was like, okay, this this hero is just straight broken. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if you got a chance to play him at BlizzCon, but uh, he, uh, no. I know for sure, so like his W does less damage than it did at BlizzCon and stuff. So he got a little nerfed since then. So he's still really good. He's still really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think I just saw a post on here. He has like a sixty nine percent win rate right now or yeah. something. <laughs> like, I'm sure okay. that. See how sure. long it takes yeah. before they uh, tweak that. Hopefully, they give him a little space to breathe, but. Yeah, I'd give it a little time. You'll see, you know, you know, you know how it goes. All right, it's sixty-two on hot slogs, but somewhere on Reddit, I saw sixty-nine. Oh, okay. So. Hmm. Well, yeah, he's good for sure, for sure. Oh, that was eleven hours ago, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, who knows what's happened in eleven hours? That's like so many games. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, before we get started, we like to get to know the uh, the guests a little bit because uh, you know there's not a lot of a lot, there's lots of opportunities to see you guys play, but not a lot to get uh, get to know you. Now you were in the uh, the documentary, a new hero about uh, Heroes of the Dorm, which actually gave us a really great look into your life and stuff, which was really cool. But uh, yeah, like um, I don't know, I just ask questions. Uh, what is your what's your favorite kind of music? Oh, uh, I would say music, probably like Future House, EDM. Okay, that's for like guys way younger than me. I don't even know what those words mean, <laughs> oh, but God. I'm sure I'm sure it's great. I'm an old man. It's, it's pretty good. You Is should kind of get with the time. You know what? Yeah. I'm I work in the music industry, like in radio, and I'm like I don't know what they're talking about because <laughs> radio isn't music anymore. It's for old people. Oh well. <laughs> That's okay. So that question to get to know you just made me depressed. So good job, good job, good job. Um, what else? Uh, uh, what What do I ask them, Ryan? I always forget. Ask him a question. What do you want to know? What do you want to know about right. Raffle? Yeah, I want to know what your favorite skin in the game is. Mm. Mm. Good one. Uh, Buccaneer Falstad. Okay. That one's easy, actually. Mm, that's a good one. That's <laughs> well, a good one. We've had a lot of people struggle with this. This is good. I like your decisiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's for the troll reason. So if you like spam the dance key, he like makes this weird noise, <laughs> and like you can spam it so much that it starts like overlapping, and like all you can hear is just him dancing because it makes like this trumpet sound. Oh yeah, and I've heard it, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it tilts everyone in the game. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was just about to say how much a stand like that can tell tell you about someone, and now we know a lot more about you. <laughs> troll. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right. I I. Uh, I have, I remember that noise. I haven't heard it in a while, and I hope I don't. Anyway. Oh. Another another important question. You may not see this very much, but how do you feel about first pick novas? <laughs> first pick novas. Um, if it's Ali, it's okay because I know mm -hmm. he's a god on Nova. But if it's anyone else, man, just 
Just don't do it. Just pick something. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he's on board. Good. He's good. somewhat on board. All right. Good. We can keep him. <laughs> if, you're, if you're like, you can only play Nova, and that's the only hero you can play, go yeah. for it. Otherwise, just, I don't just know. pick There's Rainer a... or something, man. I don't know. <laughs> there, there are a lot of people with like 500 Nova games, and they're like, don't worry, I got this, fam. And then they did blow them down. But... Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, that's the classic death Belie metal. Believe like, me. No, no, trust me. I'm trust, different. Trust. I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, we have, I'm sure, um, that people who saw this on the Twitter, and I think we're on the Blizz Game Launcher, which is always cool, uh, but we are giving away, we are we are the Great Father Winter tonight, which is, you know, always exciting. Uh, we are giving away five Ragnaros bundles, five, that's so many. Uh, so I figure we might as well give one out to some early, early birds, uh, you know. I don't know how many people are watching right now, hopefully more than, more than we have prizes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, we're good, we're good, that's plenty, that's plenty. Okay, so yeah, early birds get the giant, fiery, evil worm. So uh, go ahead and type in the chat, and I will uh, do do a little giveaway thing. And uh, just, you can say anything in there, uh, doesn't matter what you say. Um, and uh, we'll give away a Ragnaros skin, which is, you know, pretty awesome with the little Ragnaros. Right now I'm showing 29 viewers, I, I think that's enough to do a giveaway, sure. You know, you know, early bird does get the worm. I like, I like where your head's at. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, just give him a few, give him a little while here to uh, typey type. Uh, so you, uh, so you kind of like semi-retired a little while back to do focus on school, yeah. but uh, are you like he, a... he was a star of the of the Here's the Dorm documentary. If yeah, you haven't caught that. Make sure you do. Yes, definitely watch that. Um, it was awesome. Uh, but what was I going to ask? Oh, are you, like, subbing for Vox, or are you, like, on there fully? Okay, so <laughs> it was kind of weird how it turned about. Like, I, well, honestly, I wasn't, like, looking for a team. But I got, like, a like a like quite a bit of offers, honestly, to uh, participate in the HGC. And eventually it just kind of, like, wore on me, and then I just caved in at the end. And I was uh. like, okay, I guess <laughs> I'll play. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they just when you thought you were out, they pulled you back in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It was hard. It was hard to say no. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, you love the game, and we all do, so that's that's good. Yeah. I understand. You, you mentioned you just finished finals. What are you studying? Uh, electrical engineering. Ooh, yeah. Good one. Good one. Good. Have you have you switched it up since you've been at school, or has that been the plan the whole time? Um. So like, I started out at a different university, and then okay. I finally decided I was like, well, I like math and science is all right. So let's go ahead. <laughs> Makes sense. Let's go ahead and do. Let's let's see how engineering goes. And so I had to transfer to UT because they don't offer uh, electrical engineering at my previous mm -hmm. university, and um, that's why I'm here. And I haven't switched since. <laughs> See, you got you and Ryan both got like useful or working on useful <laughs> degrees. Like I, I just got a humanities <laughs> degree, and I'm like. <laughs> Uh, hi, yeah, so, good call. Um, <laughs> and now you worked in radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, didn't even do anything with it, yeah, so, alright, so let's see who our first winner is here, we've got some, got some typing in the chat, so, our first winner is Thruanduil, Thruanduil, which I, I'm sure is a Tolkien reference, uh, let me message you real quick, uh, and send you that code, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started, alright, Congratulations on your Ragnaros and little tiny baby Ragnaros. All right, how do I whisper a guy? Oh, there we go. Whisper. Wait, that skin kills me so hard. I lost to I lost to that that skin last night. Oh, the God. little the little Ragnaros. Gee, how little did rag. that make you feel? Oh, it made me feel pitiful, man. Yeah, the first time I squeaky voice. Yeah, the first time he yelled, I didn't know who it was. I, I thought <laughs> I thought it was like a like a lady. I was like, who's this evil lady screaming on the map? Did they change Garden of Terror? Like, and it was just little Ragnaros. So, I'm pretty sure pretty soon you can trade a whole skin hero troll comp where it's just. Pathetic people like Lily and Abathur <laughs> and Baby Ragnaros, and it's true. So you lose to a baby, a slug, and a panda girl. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So we got one Ragnaros out there, and now uh, we can get started. I think on talking some drafts. So uh, the first game you picked tonight was uh, between your team Vox. N uh, now I, I say Vox Nihili because it's like nihilistic. Like uh, apparently yeah. that's wrong. I don't know, but I'm gonna keep saying it because I can't help it. Uh, so uh, your team, Fox and Ally versus uh, Chew Ate My Hot Doggy, uh, Chew yeah. Ate's team. Um, so uh, actually, I, I I have a lot of fun watching watching them too because uh, you know they sometimes they could bust out the crazy strats and they try stuff, so that's always fun. 
and uh, the map was Braxis Holdout, and this is from the most recent uh, the qualifier uh, for HGC that recently, I believe it was a week ago or two weeks ago. One of them, I think it was. Yeah. A week ago. Tell it, it was December eleventh. December eleventh. Okay, there we go. Not that long ago, but uh, tell us a little bit about about Braxis. I absolutely love this map. So tell us where your where your heads at, what you what you feel like about about the the battleground and what heroes you want to pick up, things like that. Yeah. So Braxis is one of the maps where I think draft is probably the most important. So that's why I picked this map, just because it's, it's, I feel like, especially even in Hero League, like, if you don't get a good draft, you'll just straight up lose this, lose this map. Um, a wave clear is extremely important, and so is pushing potential. Uh, so heroes that I like to prioritize on this map would be Gul'dan, uh, Sylvanas, uh, Vala. And then uh, here recently, since the patch, I've been seeing, like, more Chromie on this map, just because it's so strong in the four man. And then even uh, Li Ming too for like the poke potential. Oh, okay, Li Ming, okay. sure. Yeah, uh, I don't see. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't exactly think of Li Ming as a, as a as a as a Braxis hero, but it makes sense for sure. Uh, well, I yeah. didn't really either, especially after the change to Calamity. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's it's, not really her purpose, right? So. Yeah, it's the poke in the four man that you really mm -hmm. pick right. her for. I mean, you don't want to pick her early, right? Because she's not as good as like Gul'dan or mm -hmm. even Chromie for that. But like, you can pick her up if you can't get the other heroes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I guess um, going into this, uh, you haven't been with them very long, obviously. But w uh, what would you say uh, Vox Nihili's uh, uh, kind of style is, or like how how what kind of team are they in general? Like, are they a very aggressive team? Do they like to win in the draft? Uh, do they like pick comps? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, it seems like we like for the little bit of time that we were together. It's like we oriented ourselves closer towards like a strong like ball comp where you'd have like you know like oriel and then you know like a mm -hmm. hyper carry with like a second support or something like that like a death where you ball just kind of ball up yeah. yeah like a death ball type comp i think is what we we geared towards cool it's a good map for this it so. is. yeah it is. <laughs> Fit yeah. right in your style right so. yeah that's what we thought <laughs> yeah all right so you guys actually did have the first ban here uh, and you uh first ban to Ronda, uh which uh you know for a long time in the meta um Bands were always about uh, fighting over tanks. Well, not always, but a lot of time fighting over ETC and Muradin or blocking that or what have you. Uh, this was the first time this event where, where, where we were seeing these kind of semi supports getting banned out a lot. Um, so tell us about the Toronto first ban. Yeah. So our thought process here was we wanted to ban out their cheese because they know that they like. We knew that they like to play a pick comp on this map, and that usually involved Toronto in some right. sort of way. I think we discussed another hero, but I can't recall exactly what that was. But we just decided we wanted to ban out the cheese. Okay. Yeah. Um. They do. They do run that uh, Toronto quite a bit. Chu Eight does. Uh, just because they. Uh, I, I. I'm excited to see what they do with uh, the new Diablo. Uh. Because. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Oh man. <laughs> I've, 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 you know, I talked to a few of like my friends who are still in the competitive scene, like Aka and you know Michael and all of them, mm -hmm. and they tell me that Diablo is just like Ragnaros isn't okay. That's the reason why I had a bad impression about Ragnaros is because they told me he wasn't that good in competitive. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like Diablo is insane and competitive, oh, and he's pretty good in Hero League. He's he's good. <laughs> I played him a few times last night, and I was like, oh my god, because that was my that wasn't my first hero. I got to ten, but it was my first hero that I was like really into. I was like, I love yeah. playing Diablo, so I'm like really happy he's back. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, he's yeah. come in and out of the meta a long time since mm -hmm. technical alpha. I mean, it's, there was yeah. there was a really cyclical for him. There was a while in alpha where Blizzard was talking about completely reworking him and giving him a different playstyle because it wasn't working, and. <laughs> like some people like me and stuff were like, "Don't change him. He does suplexes. It's amazing. Stop it." And they didn't they like, to tune him. Yeah, tune no, yeah, they just like tune add him. a new animation or something because it's like they're like, he does like a new suplex animation or something. Does he? he doesn't just like pick them up with like one hand anymore. Oh, I had no, like, I had no. They'll like use both hands. It's I hope he does weird. like a full blown like German suplex. That'd be awesome. Yeah, like. <laughs> You would. Hi, right, dude. That'd be so cool. Anyway, they should they should make like a luchador skin for him. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, been saying that for so long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be awesome. All right. Anyway, sorry. Distracted skin talk. Uh, <laughs> Chu Eight ends up banning out another semi support. Uh, they they ban the Tassadar. So um, interesting to see these two bans right out the gate. Um, very different from what we saw in recent history. Um, uh, what do you think they were looking at with the Tassadar ban? So. I think it was deny the like the Vala pickup to some extent, and also like, kind of I guess like to ruin the rest of the draft. I don't know. Yeah. They <laughs> were also going towards a Zeratul. I mean, is what that tells me too, mm -hmm. um, just because they have Glaurung on their team. 
right, uh, right. Mm-hmm. and he's you know Zero very well God, known, right? yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, very. Well, Tassar fits into a lot of competitive comps right now, and yeah. especially even you know, not that it's his role on this particular map, but he does have some wave clear, which can be helpful as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay, I, I I I get that. Um, it was just surprising to see for me when I watched the vods. Um, I think I watched them a few nights ago. Uh, yeah. he, oh, go ahead. You also play a decent amount of Tassar, right? I mean, did you feel? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Upset at I didn't this? know that. Like, were you alright? Uh, I don't like. I'm. <laughs> Like, I feel like I have a decent Tassadar, but he's not a hero where, like, if they ban out, I'm, like, really okay. upset about. <laughs> well, did, uh, let me rephrase that. Did you plan on picking him earlier, like, going into oh, this? Was the he one you draft? wanted? Yeah. Um, I think we had always planned on going Gul'dan in this draft. Okay. Yeah, um, and usually, you, you know, you don't want to really pair up Tassadar with Gul'dan, mm-hmm. um, just because you, you're not going to get a lot of value from his level 4 talent. And usually Gul'dan doesn't want to be in the front lines as much as, like, let's say Vala does, or another auto attacker. Mm-hmm. Well, well, and you really need to heal him to get use of his. Yeah, and the shield doesn't right. affect his life exactly. tap, so. Right. Yeah. right, that's a good point. All right, but you guys actually do end up first picking uh, Zarya uh, over the, the Gul'dan, so, um, which, you know, make, I mean, he's not super high priority, but he could be. Uh, but what made you lean towards the Zarya here? All right, so the Zarya here for us. Um, we knew that Chu-8 uh, heavily prioritized Zarya, and mm-hmm. they usually run like a lot of comps with Zarya. And also, Zarya um, does really well on this map, just because the shielding is nice um, to save people. And she has a, a lot of poke and good wave clear with her Q. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the AoE uh, plasma ball thing is definitely good at, at clearing out those Zerg. Um, now, the other thing, the other nice thing about the first Zarya pick is not only does it take away a hero they like a lot, but she's also doesn't give away a lot. Um, she's not, she, she doesn't indicate a whole comp, like, oh, the, like, if you first pick Illidan, you know kind of what's coming, you know. Um, with Zarya, she shields, you know, she's kind of a support, kind of a tank, kind of a warrior, so you're, you, your picks are still kind of up in the air. So kind of what I saw as an advantage of this Zarya first pick. Uh, to, you know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really standard, and you can't really read too much into it. Right, right. You can have like a sort of idea that they might be going into a Vala comp. That's usually what that says. Is they're usually picking up like a a hyper carry because mm-hmm. because Zarya mm-hmm. and Tass kind of have a similar role, except Zarya does just she does more damage and more utility, and right. Tass offers more healing. It's just a and very good really... all around. Yeah. yeah, and vision. Yeah, and vision, and vision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, with their first two picks, they actually pick up ETC and Ariel. Um, so they did leave the Gul'dan on the table. Um, what do you make of uh, these early picks from them? So the ETC tells me that they're looking to um, get kills early. I mean, he's also just one of the better tanks on this map just because of his kill potential in the four-man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Oriel tells me that they're looking at another, like, um, a high energy generator. Right. Um, Tychus, Vala, Gul'dan, one of those hyper carries again. Something you, uh, that they were probably going to go after anyway, considering yeah, it's, this it's map, right? Yeah, it's pretty standard. The, mm-hmm. the beginning of this draft is really standard, is for the most part. Now, when you see an Ariel pick like this, uh, she's a great, great healer, obviously, but she does have a glaring, well, kind of glaring uh, downside, and that's that she doesn't have cleanse. Uh, do you do? Is there any way that you can kind of exploit an Ariel early Ariel pick by uh, exploiting that lack of cleanse, like a heavy CC comp, like? Yeah, it's possible. Um, the problem the problem with the heavy CC comp is you have to snowball early, mm-hmm. which is easy to do in Braxis. Right. But um, you know, after ten, it's not as effective, I would say, okay. and it gets kind of awkward. Right. Um, but it is possible. Like if you like, let's say Toronto was still open, like that's a possibility. You could go into a Toronto comp and, mm-hmm. and try to um, just nuke them early and just snowball the map right. off of them. Now, obviously, in your tournaments, oh. you're not you're not going to be like trying to do like like just completely throw your comp out the window because they pick Ariel. She doesn't have cleanse, but like for Hero yeah. League, you might want to lean towards someone with heavy CC because of that pick. You know, well, that's, this, that's... But, oh, she also has Aegis though too, right? Which yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, can act as a similar function. Right, but that's that's a costly cleanse, you know. Well, I yeah, agree, you know. depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. This is actually to sum up this draft. It was really we should have just um, stayed to our guns. And not try to conform to their draft, and you'll see that later. Is okay. where we kind of we mess up and don't stick to our draft and try to conform and counter theirs. Right, right, and that's always kind of the main two options when drafting, right? It's either try yeah. and stop their comp or just get our comp, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's always it's always a fun kind of discussion, uh, you know, talking about when when to do one, when to do the other, if you should at all, you know. 
So yeah. You, yeah. All right. So you guys uh, end up do uh, the the Gul'dan is there, so you do pick him up, and uh, you also get uh, Dahaka. Yeah. So <laughs> Dahaka. So the Gul'dan was pretty standard, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the Dahaka was our thought process. There was to deny Glau from uh, Dahaka, and additionally, um, hit the potential for him to like come down. And initiate like a five v four is is pretty high on this map. I don't necessarily know if that was the best pick um, in hindsight, okay. but that was our thought process at the time. Sure. Okay. So this is where you start kind of uh, trying to counter with your dragon. Yeah. This okay. is where we start messing up. I think is with the Dahaka pick. Okay. Um, yeah, looking back, that probably should have been like Mouth. Right. Um, just because Mouth pairs off really well with Gul'dan since they already took the Oriel. Um. You know, you have two different ways to sustain Gul'dan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, so why did you pick up the the Gul'dan instead of uh, the Vala? Uh, I think the I think we went Gul'dan here just because we wanted to prioritize the wave clear more. Okay. Um, Who's your Gul'dan it, player? Sorry. Uh, it's Nightmare. Nightmare. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's Nightmare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What, what was it, to some degree, was it also that you didn't want to give Gul'dan to them with the RL? With yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, for sure. Yeah, I could see that. And, and also, Vala kind of like if you run Vala Oriel, you kind of want to have a second support um, because there'll be like awkward, awkward points in time where like, let's say the Vala gets CC chained and then she'll be sitting at like thirty percent health, right? Well, she can't generate energy anymore for Oriel because she's just too risky to step back up and fight. Mm-hmm. And right. that's kind of the awkwardness with those two. But you don't really experience that with Gul'dan because he's he has much greater range. Um. So. Um. I'm glad we were able to discuss Ariel, uh, <laughs> because, you know, it's good to talk about these heroes, but uh, I just clicked the wrong button. Uh, they did not pick Ariel. They picked a mouth. So, okay. Yeah, my bad. So we should have picked Ariel then instead of the Hawkeye. Yeah, bad. there you go. I mean, this, the, the, the theory still applies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My bad, guys. We definitely should have picked up our support here instead of instead yeah. of um, the Hawkeye, I think. Mm-hmm. So they actually end up banning Ariel here, which is where I got confused. Uh, so Chu8 uh, bans Ariel. Um, hey, are you are you sure? Uh, that's what I'm looking at. Is it not? No, not not in not okay. what I'm looking at. Hold on, let me let me see. I might have written it down wrong. I might be <laughs> I might be the worst. Hold on. I mean, I've well, never... I'm just looking at the wrong game. So uh, let me see. Box Nali, Chew Eight Mahout Dogi. Uh, yeah, no, it says they ban Ariel and pick Mouth here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I the link I sent game. you. Yeah. All right. Good. Oh, I'm... we're Skype now. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Oh. <laughs> My bad. There you go. Okay. Uh, so I'm not a complete idiot. So we're just yeah. a half idiot. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, so they ban uh, they ban the Ariel. So they're denying yeah. you that so healer with that, Gul'dan. And... So that wouldn't even have been an issue if we just picked up our support there instead of Dahaka, because we were trying to counter Glau out, mm-hmm. um, and we should have stayed to our comp and just picked up. Or Zarya, Gul'dan, and then a support, and it doesn't matter if it's Mouth or Oriel. Um, we still have another opportunity to even pick up Medic, but we messed that up too. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the healers. Uh, it's tempting to wait on them, right? Like it's tempting to like get yeah. like big killers and sweet tanks, but like sometimes it can it can come back and bite you when you when you don't prioritize Especially- that. Well, you need a healer to make Gul'dan work effectively, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need a like a. He needs an One engine. Of healers, right? Yeah, yeah you, right. Need, you need those healers to make him by a, or more effective. Well, like we were talking before the show started, you said that this was a learning experience, so it's good that you can look back at these drafts and see kind of where yeah. things started off the rail. <laughs> Not only did we mess up once, we messed up three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you did that because it's good to pick drafts that, you know, maybe you didn't win or six, like totally outdraft the team because it's... it's it helps a lot to for people, I think, to be able to hear how a person who knows what they're really knows what they're doing looks back at a draft they screwed up on, you know. So that that's good, yeah, awesome. Uh, and what else? Well, oh, you guys banned Vala, right? Yeah. So um, is that just a general like Vala's just a really good assassin, or is there a, re- a particular reason on this map, or? Uh, I can't remember our reasoning for the Vala ban. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I like they could. They could pair it off maybe with another support. Um, like, 
it's not uncommon, like in scrims, I've seen where they'll pair off like two full supports with a Vala to keep her up. Right, right. So it's it's possible they could do that. Uh, honestly, I, I, I actually looking back, I don't like that ban that much either. Um, okay. Maybe like I feel like maybe a Sylvanas ban could have been better. I mean that's excluding the fact that you know they end up do picking up Sylvanas. I think Sylvanas would have been better pick. Right. Um, yeah. Just so I they mean... can't. Just so they can't run us around because we already have the better four man already with Zarya and Gul'dan. Like. Right. There's nothing they can pick that would that would be better than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you don't see Vala, I think, banned a whole lot in the second phase, or typically, um, just because the assassin pulls so much bigger than other yeah. classes. So yeah, I get it. All right, uh, what? Well, there's not that many like hard hitting backline. I don't know, Uber Terry is like we were talking about, right? Until Dan and well, yeah. Vala. There's, there's like a few. Yeah, I those. guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. But you guys um, went ahead and banned that. Where are we? Uh, so they pick Sylvanas and Zeratul. Yep. And that basically means that they're just going to run us around. They they don't care about losing the four-man too much, and they're just going to try to run us around and then pick us off when we rotate. And then also there's like Wombo potential between the Zeratul VP, Malfru, and then the Sylvanas Silence. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Is there? Did you consider banning now Zeratul instead of the Vala? Because you um, said... When they banned out the Tastar, you thought that they might be headed that way. Yeah, we, like, for this map, Zeratul isn't, like, that threatening. Like, if it was Cursed mm -hmm. Hollow, like, sure, I would probably ban out Zeratul there. But we, like, we were thinking, you know, our four man's so strong, like, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And we should just be able to snowball off that and just get the fort. But since they have Sylv and Zeratul, like, they can, they can nearly match our push. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Like, yeah. and they have pick potential at 10, or, right. you know, early. Yeah, pick potential and then uh, wombo potential, too. Yeah. Um, so the only thing they're really missing at this point is, like, a like a crazy uh, high damage, like, ranged. Like, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so then you guys round out your team with uh, double support. Uh, you go Brightwing Kerosene. Yeah, this is, this is honestly the biggest flaw of this, like, uh, draft, I think, was we should have just went, like, I think we should have just picked up like medic here, even though they do have all that wombo, and mm -hmm. just and just hope that like we outpush them. I think would be the best bet because we we still should outpush them. Right, right. Because uh, we have so much more wave clear than they do. Yeah, with Gul'dan and the, and the Zarya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we pick the pick the Brightwing as a counter, and then we and then Karazim's a soft counter to Zeratul. Like we just we way over respected the Zeratul pick up here and okay. and completely ruined our draft because of it. Right. So and that you, that was you on the Karazim, right? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. How how do you feel about about Karazim? Do you like uh, DPS Karazim? What what are your thoughts about his kind uh, of recent rework? He's really good. Uh, he has to be kind of paired off in the right comp though. Like mm -hmm. I, you don't really want to solo support with him too much, even though that does happen later in the draft. Um, in in the series, they actually do solo support DPS monk. Um, but even again, like I think we just uh, didn't play the game well, and I don't necessarily agree with like him as the only support if you're going to build him full DPS. Right. Like if you're going to solo support him, you should at least take Palm, uh, and you pretty much always go Iron Fist. Right. You pair it off with Palm. Yeah, I think he's kind of in a weird state where like they want him to do be able to do two things fully, but he can't quite still. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like either or, but you can only kind of do one and a half. Like, you can, like, do some damage and get a little W heal, but you can't really... If you pick him as a healer, yeah, I agree. I, 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 I like him I like him with Tassadar a lot. Like, if you go Tass, Karazim, yeah. it's, mm. it's... You heal yourself the full bite with auto attacks right, Karazim, right. so you don't right. hit yeah. yourself at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds pretty good. Wave 100 fists, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, so what do they finish out with? Uh, they they Falstad. yeah they pick Falstad for their last pick, which actually yeah. I uh, I guess that's a pretty good choice looking at it now. Yeah, <laughs> like um, they, I said, they lack that kind of range damage dealer, and there he is, and he's got the nice global for the beacons and whatnot. Yeah, Falstad lanes well against Tahaka. Like he mm -hmm. doesn't uh, you know he doesn't win the lane, but he does pretty well against Tahaka. Like he, I don't think he'll have too much control on the point, but that's they have Zeratul too, so like the Haka has to play scared. Right. So it's actually mm -hmm. they did really well. Like they pretty much oriented themselves more towards the top lane, and we oriented ourselves more towards the four man. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is like you said, kind of your style, uh, team style. 
Um, yeah. Now I played uh, quite a bit of Dahaka and I end up playing against Falstad a lot. Uh, and yeah, he he uh, he definitely doesn't lose or win, but he he can definitely hold his own there just with the burrow when he tries to boomerang and or uses lightning rod and stuff. And I wonder with the rework uh, how that matchup looks now uh, with his different burrow options and stuff. Yeah. Um, I would say it just helps Dahaka even more. Yeah. Um, it, but the thing is, though, is you lose your global time a little bit, right? Didn't they nerf that some? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so, like, you can't, you have to play a little bit smarter, I guess, about it. Mm -hmm. um, can't get chunked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you'll, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, you're probably right. Uh, so you guys did not end up losing this game, or? Yeah, we lost this game. They they pretty much did exactly what Sylv does on Braxis. Right. Um, we didn't hold out long enough. Like, because Monk, cause Monk doesn't really take off till 16. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, he, he does well at four, and then he and then he gets better, and he gets better, and then he really takes off at 16 with his kill potential. And they basically snowballed the game with the first uh, Zerg Wave and one, I think, at like 8.30 or something like that. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. I remember yeah, this game. They, yeah, got, yeah. they pretty much got an insane Wombo uh, with the Zera tool on the keep, killed, like, everybody. And then uh, we spawned back just in time to defend core, and then they just rushed core and killed it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, Sylvanas so at, is crazy. <laughs> yeah. at, at the end of this draft, kind of, how did you guys feel? Do you feel like right away? Did you think you'd gotten beaten in a draft? Did you think that uh, your four man was still going to power through? I mean, the how did you feel about the draft in general? And there's their comp. Okay. So we thought that we like countered them well enough on the Zeratul that we didn't have to worry about it. But like, I think Dahaka got picked uh, on top, which I guess was a problem with our comp. Uh, mm -hmm. And then. Like, uh, and then our early game push wasn't as strong enough because we didn't have a, a healer that could sustain Gul'dan. So, mm -hmm. like, we still won the four man, but we didn't win it hard enough to to make up for our, our weaker top lane. Mm -hmm. So that was basically the problem with the draft. All right. I've got a question. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, start. Uh, you guys can type in chat, and uh, I'll and, and I'll start. We'll we'll give away three Ragnaroses right now, and then one at the end. Uh, so start typing in the chat, and I'll do the giveaway for that. Um, but I did have a question from the chat here that, uh, so HL655 uh, was wondering if uh, Chen would have been a better choice than Dahaka in this situation. Yeah, so the Chen pick, I I don't like it too much, because mm -hmm. they still have like a lot of opportunities to counter Chen. Um, they, can, they still have a range that they can pick up, so they could pick up Tychus for him up there. Like, Chen loses that lane. Mm -hmm. against Tychus, and then they could also like, knowing Glau, they could still pick up Dahaka, and I think Dahaka does okay against mm -hmm. Chen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, Chen pick up you're just going to get countered right. in, this, in their second pick up rotation. Yeah. Cool, alright. So er early on in this map, we saw kind of some, some Raxar play. Um, mm -hmm. He's kind of fallen right off. What do you attribute that to? Um, Just the prevalence of Dahaka. Dahaka does alright against Rexar, and I think also like because Thrall is coming, kind of coming back into the meta too. I think Thrall does all right against Rexar because you just constantly just Q spam the Rexar, and he can't really do too much about it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. okay. That and I think the um, I think people are getting smarter about globals too. Like if you just have false side, you can just fly on top of them and kill them. Can't do anything about it. How do you how do you feel about the the recent changes to well, just the nerf to to global cooldowns? Um, do you think that that's had a major effect or? Or just kind of, because it's all of them, it's not overly significant? Um, it's enough for it to be annoying, but I don't think it's enough to, like, actually change the meta, right? Like, it's still, like, you still notice it's, like, globals are still highly prioritized. Right. You, like, you want to have at least one, um, almost always. <laughs> uh... It's not enough to actually make it matter. It's It just makes, it just means you have to play smarter, basically. Right now, anyways. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do think since Braxis came out, people have gotten, in general, all over the leagues, uh, more, yeah, more, I guess, uh, vigilant about um, globals and how to counter them and how to use them. So I think it's been a good map for the actual overall health of people's gameplay. So that's cool. Uh, let's give away this Ragnaros. Our winner is Biceps, come on. <laughs> Biceps, come on. Congratulations. Nice, nice. Well, right. while we're giving these away, we talked about how Braxis is my favorite battleground. What is your favorite battleground to play on? That's a good question. Um, you know, honestly, I've been liking Garden lately. 
Really? I kind of wow, go through, that's, I that's go not what we hear often. <laughs> I go through phases. I like. I think for a while I used to like. Um, I used to like Dragonshire, and now I'm like I'm starting to like Garden. I guess because everyone hates on it, and it's one of my favorite maps now. <laughs> you know, it's okay. a lot. It's better than it used to be. I think I'm getting more used to it, but yeah. it's, it's still not one of my. Yeah, I'm like eh. I, to me, I, I liked it even less with the nerfed globals. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the reason why people hated it is because the objective was annoying, and then. Mm -hmm. Like, Vikings are OP with that objective, right? Yeah. But, like, here lately, it seems like because Vikings... Because how prevalent globals are, like, Vikings are not as good. And then, also, the change to the objective, it's, like, it's it's not as, like, annoying as it used to be, I guess. Right. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah, it, it was really annoying for a while, but now it's kind of like, eh, all right. Yeah, and know? I think it still has a bad rap, even though it's changed its ways. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. We have a we have a question from the from the chat too. So you played a lot yesterday. Uh, what do you think of the new haunted mines? I played one game of the haunted mines, and the the golem like has a wet noodle for an arm now. It does no damage, <laughs> so you like have to push with it. Um, and how it works is it seems like every golem phase there's going to be like a team fight around the the big golem now. So it's pretty cool. like you team fight pretty often in that map now, um, and melees are really important because you have to split up at the beginning phase of the. Yeah. I really like how, how there's four entrances. I think that that's really that was a that's, good change. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that really is a good, good change. change. So you don't get womboed. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And although uh, we we learned yesterday that Abathur mines yeah, are pretty serious. I was about to say, <laughs> well, that's the old school, right? Like I forgot all about it, and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> Abathur mines at the mine entrance every. So like he always he's always gonna put them at the one nearest yeah, the base. Yeah, he always knows where you're at. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was driving me nuts. I was Zeratul. I was just like, I can't do anything. All right, let's give away this Ragnaros number three. The winner is Captain Logan. Congratulations, oh, Captain yeah. Logan. That's our mod. I, I you know, what? I know. Rigged, rigged. Ne nep nepotism, <laughs> rigged. Yep, yep. All that. Yep. Yeah, you can win. That's it's fine. I mean, we're not paying you. <laughs> yeah, you're unpaid. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was random. I promise. Yeah, so, and there's still two more to give away. So. Right. So, what is your favorite, like, quirky thing about heroes? Your favorite trick or things? Or something that people don't really know? Hmm. Or you don't... I would say it's simultaneously my most hated and favorite thing is body blocking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, right. Because it's it's not really like it happens in other mobas, but it's not as like prevalent. Like, like in heroes, you can just straight deny someone. Like they cannot walk past you, right? But. Right. Yeah. I love doing it to people, and I hate when it happens to me. Yeah, <laughs> that was the one big uh, transition coming from other mobas for me too. Was like uh, Dota and stuff. Uh, was the body blocking, and this is very like uh, you know you can really do it in this game. And I was like, I don't know, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. I actually really like it now. Yeah. Um. So I want to give away what was it? yeah one more, and uh, I did have a question for you while I do the drawing, the la uh, last drawing till the uh, fourth drawing of five. Sorry. Uh, and that is if you could uh. Basically, talk about what people are missing. You think a lot of people miss in draft, or like a, kind of rules of thumb for drafting for themselves, hero league mm -hmm. or team league. Uh, what, what sort of things would you say? Um, so like your standard hero league draft, I would say a lot of people miss out on um, like how tanky your front line is, because sometimes people will just like <laughs> will pick like. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. They'll just pick like a really weak tank that doesn't offer a lot of peel mm -hmm. for like um, like a really weak backline. I don't know how to explain it. Like, let's say the other team has like a really heavy dive, right? Yeah. You, and for some reason they'll pick Johanna. It's like Johanna actually does not peel that well. Right. You want to have like a stun tank or someone that can slow them down. Chen or uh, Murden or ETC. Yeah. Murden, ETC, like Chen even, but Chen kind of just harasses the backline. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's one thing people miss out, I guess, is, like, Johanna is not a peel tank. <laughs> so if they have heavy dive, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Johanna, they're just going to run right past her and just laugh. I mean, that's what I do, yeah. <laughs> when I'm Kerrigan, yeah. Like, I'm like, woohoo. Yeah, so. You just queue right past her, and she's just like, uh... Hold on, I'm coming to get you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Mom's laughs> <like, "I'm> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's give away this fourth one. Uh, and the winner of Ragnaros number four is... Filthy Nwa. 
nice, uh, nice, nice uh, 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 Elder Scrolls reference there. I like that. Do you have any uh, any Ragnaros impressions for us, Danny? Have you been working on any since oh, you came out? I haven't, but I can do one just to embarrass myself if you like. Oh, please do. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. Let me whisper this guy. Hold on. Do you want yelling or do you want like... <laughs> I don't know, whatever you think it is best. It has to be the full impression. Dude. Okay. okay, yeah. Too soon. Thing. Too soon, executor. Die, insect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Right? Like, it's not bad for being put on the spot. Come on now. No, that was, that was good. I'm impressed. I mean, I, 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 you have high standards. I expect a lot from you, considering you won the Blizztown Soundlight Contest. Right, well, but... yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Well, I feel, you know what? I, I don't feel as bad about it as I could have, so thank you for that. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> thank, you, th- thank you for obliging. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Sure. You're welcome. You're welcome. See, I would give you an A+, plus, but you said executor, not executus. Executus! Ooh. Oh, I just really... Oh, I God. like StarCraft a lot more than WarCraft, bro. Like, I'm sorry. I know. I know. I heard that. I was like, I'm going to give him an A, but I'm going to have to give him an A- minus for that. All right, I'll take the A-. Minus. Yeah. I'll take the A-. Minus. My bad. My bad. There you go. See, I was feeling good, but Rafa was here to make me feel good. There we go. Feels good, man. I just... I used to, Thank I used you for to raid. keeping him grounded. I used to raid Bolton Core. So did you know, I. You know, yeah. I heard, I've heard that phrase so many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I blew it. I blew it. See, I, I only come from StarCraft. I've never really played WoW, so it sounded good to me. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, see, <laughs> this is why I need Ryan around, and, and you know, no one else, no one else checking me. You know, That's right. he doesn't know, he doesn't know WarCraft. <laughs> I am a Protoss. I, I main Protoss yes. in StarCraft, so like yeah. you know. That's what I like. I'm to on hear. that we're, level. Uh, we're friends now, so yeah, yeah. we're still good. I'm just you yeah, know I got to call you out because uh, I used to raid in vanilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I call did. him out every time. He's a filthy Terran player. So. Ooh, ooh. Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I I raided in vanilla too, so there was really no excuse. And I mean, oh. I, I spent hundreds of hours in that raid. Like so, yeah. There's no excuse. No excuse. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, all this right. It's getting worse. <laughs> I know, I know. The embarrassing secrets just keep coming out. So this next game you picked actually was on Infernal Shrines, um, and it was oh, against uh, Miasma. Yeah, against Miasma. Yeah. So let me change that here. And it was, uh, yeah. Uh, do you remember what game in the series it was? Oh, uh, I thought it was game one, but I don't. I think you're right. Which actually. One? Which one are we talking okay. about? Uh, uh, but... Infernal Shrine against Miasma. No, it was oh, game two. It was game two. It was game two. Yeah, okay. yeah it was. Mm-hmm. The oh, first right. game. I the first game was, was on Cursed three. Hollow. Well, it doesn't it really matter. Three? I've been watching games. it right now. Oh really? We dropped one game to them, I think, right? Or no? I think they won game one, from what I can see on this. Yes, right now on my yeah. screen it's one to one. And one to one. Infernal okay, so this is game three. All right. All right. Book Martell only. Yes, Ryan. Yes. Well, I know because I don't. I didn't want you to be embarrassed. If they started talking about how terrible Show Martel was. <laughs> you got that in the background. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Vox Nihili, Vox Nihili, whatever you want to call him, uh, versus Miasma Esports on Infernal Shrines, and you guys have the first ban, uh, first pick again in this game. And um, sensically, you uh, do ban out sensibly, I should say. You do ban out Kerrigan first. Yep. Um. Again, Kerrigan's just really good. She's actually even like, I don't, I don't want to say first pick worthy, but she's like super high priority on this map. And mm-hmm. again, like, uh, we don't we don't really play Kerrigan too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't I just don't think Zeus was too comfortable in the hero. I don't think he really liked the hero, so right. we just banned it out. Okay, makes sense. Uh, now tell us a little bit about what you know about Miasma and a kind of uh, what you were thinking going into this versus Miasma and on this map in general. Okay, so like in scrims, you know, it was only a week, but like scrim results were pretty one-sided, mm-hmm. and then they like completely like flipped their draft. Like, but they went from like zero to one hundred in draft <laughs> on us, and they actually started drafting really well. Uh, they were hiding um, their power level. Yeah, they secret like they were they were hiding it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, okay. So like going into the series, we weren't that worried, but as you can tell, it's one one. Right. Like we're a little worried now, yeah. and we would rather not just get snowballed. So we ban out Kerrigan here, and we don't really play it, so might as well just get rid of it. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Um, so the first thing they end up banning, actually, is the Zarya. Um, yep. Now, um, you had some... Uh, did you have some success with Zarya previous to this in scrims or in previous games with them? Um. Yeah, so in scrims, we were, like, first picking Zarya all the time and just winning with it. Um, and she's also pretty good on this map again because it's, like, this map... 
how you play it is you want to get to the point and just kind of like body each other out. Right. And Zarya is great at that because you know if you have a tank that does high damage and off also provides like support, then that's great. Like you right. can't really beat that. For sure. Um, yeah, and she's just I'm, I'm I like her a lot. <laughs> I think she's a really good hero right now. <laughs> and she's she's even better now since they changed her Q animation. Yep, yep, that's yeah. true. Anyone um, remember how bad she was when she came out? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean the the old days. Yeah, <laughs> like two months yeah. ago. Yeah. Well, it was like the opposite. Uh, Every it seems like every hero comes in overtuned, and she just wasn't. No, nope, so, she yeah. wasn't. And then she was for a day, and now she kind of yeah. is, but not too bad. Never forget the Lunara released. Oh. That was terrible. Oh. Uh, As a range assassin main, that was terrible. I hated that that whole like month. Yeah. Where they didn't do anything for. Yeah. yeah he got that? one shotted by everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was another hero that came out that was like genuinely pretty bad. I can't remember what it was. It was, but it'll come. That was me. ranged. I mean, uh, Artanis I don't know. came out at the same time, and he was right. terrible. I don't know if it Basically, was ranged. It was yeah, Artanis, it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> I like Artanis now, by the way. Um, oh, I was played against Horse Pants last night, and then swaps because because he wasn't that good before, and now that he's actually pretty good, and he's a good are, Artanis. Like, and he's a good Artanis. So yeah. people are like insane on Artanis now. Yeah. And like the dude was like sniping me with his ease. Yeah. Like I was like I don't even know how to play against that. I'm like trying to hide mm -hmm. behind my keep. He's like, nope, you can't hide there. <laughs> he has. You can't hide away. <laughs> he has the potential to like swap you like the full lane length. Like you know, like oh, yeah. it's crazy. It's huge. Yeah. You yeah. have to run stuns against him. That's basically how you counter Artanis. Is right. You just you just run stuns against him. He can't get his shield, or you know, he can't get his shield back up. If he doesn't have right. it, he's right. stunned, right? right? So pretty much that or polymorph. Or, uh, <laughs> yep. Blind that or poly. Blinds too. Blinds don't proc it, right? The cooldown reduction on the shield. I don't. I don't, I don't think, they, think do. they do. Yeah. So maybe. I know blinds. there was a bug for a while that like Illidan would still get his cooldown reduction, but you mm -hmm. know, I don't. I, I don't think so anymore. I think they changed that. Right. Okay. Well, you guys first pick uh, uh, Vala here. So uh, yeah, interesting first pick actually. I mean, she's a great hero. Uh, what tell us about that? Uh, the logic behind the first pick, Vala. So, uh, basically, you're opening yourself up to. You're pretty much telling your opponent, "I'm going to run a double support comp," and the reason why you pick her is because she has great wave clear for the monkey. I mean, the like, the monkeys. <laughs> I mean, they they, call, okay. yeah, they're okay. called monkeys. Yeah, that's fine. We call them monkeys because B Kid like started that, and it's just got stuck on everyone's head. Yeah, it's but he calls them monkeys for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. You have spider butts <laughs> on one map. You have monkeys on this map. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. But okay. the, the guardians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Skel wild. Skeletal guardians, yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. Uh, so... Well, she's just one of the all-around best assassins of the game right now, too, right? Yeah, I mean, not like... only is she particularly good at clearing shrines, but... Mm -hmm. Ton of damage, ton of wave clear. You can't yep. really beat it on this map. Now, is, is this the standard... Escape. <laughs> is this the standard uh, kind of... Uh, uh... Oh, what's the spell called? W, you know, multi shot. Is uh, this the multi shot, -shot build? This would, you would you would definitely go multi shot. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, you have to go multi shot. The only other like Infernal I would say multi shot is standard. Battlefield, and then the only other map exactly yeah. would be battlefield where you would go Q. Right. Um, okay. there's some weird interactions like let's say they have like a tracer and you're scared that you're gonna survive. Um, you don't mm -hmm. have enough support for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, you could go Q build against that. You can go Q build against Zeratul even sometimes. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, good to know because I, I, you know, I know, I know the Q is really good on uh, Battlefield, but I wasn't sure if it had a place anywhere else. Yeah, I think on um, <laughs> on um, Warhead Junction, you can solo the boss as Q build Bala. Oh wow! If you play it right. Yeah. Dang. It does too much damage. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So they pick up ETC Ariel for reals this time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, they really did guys um yeah, yeah. so uh what's the and again you said this was an indicator of something else coming so let's let's review that i guess what what, what does this say to you yeah so again etc this is um etc is the best tank on this map because mm -hmm. unlike murden his q doesn't get stopped by like um, a minion being in front of it so he can actually still cast his stun on the shrine right mm -hmm. so that's why you pick up etc here it gives you stun stuns on the shrine which is really good and then oriel pretty much means we're going to outlast you we're going to body you off the shrine again um and it means also that they need to pick up an energy generator and that could be a few different heroes um guldan right. tychus i i'll say rainer 
because you actually can run Rainer with Oriel. Okay. I've, I've been doing that lately. <laughs> nice. I but it doesn't ever really happen. It, it hasn't <laughs> caught on in competitive yet, but it, it is a thing. Okay. Does the okay. fact that Ariel has a little bit of wave clear factor into this at all? or? Yeah, I mean, it, it helps. It's just a nice bonus. It, it's a bonus, really. I think you pick Oriel mostly for the the outlast potential, and mm -hmm. also she's kind of good against dive, I think. Like, not a, not a pink oh, yeah. comp, but a dive comp. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, she's she's a she's a pretty good hero. Um, what did you guys do? Sorry, I lost my page. Okay, so you get mouth uh, again, double support, which you said you were planning on doing. Uh, yep. So you get the mouth and the Tassadar. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's uh, that's the whole the whole engine of the team is set up there. Like Vala's ready you got, you got to do Vala. Right See, there. this yeah. is what we should have done in the previous draft. Right, right. Set up. Right. You have your you have your um, hyper carry right, Gul'dan. And then you you have your two other picks to support that. You don't you don't first pick Golden, right? right? But like, you 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 should have the core of the of the composition in your first three picks. Got it. Yeah. Usually, That's a good, like unless you're trying to hide something, right? right? Yeah, unless you're trying to hide something, right? Unless it's like some off meta. But if you're if you're just drafting meta, you should have the core of your comp in the first three picks because then you can just accident with like you know a different tank here or a different you know melee assassin there. Um, right. Well, you guys got it this time, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. So, yeah, so all Val Vala is enabled, and if she can get her job done, then it's well, it's going to be pretty good. Pl plus, well, yeah, and Melv has roots, and Tassadar has some wave player for the shrine, right? Yeah. I mean, that's and a so, nice little combo there. <laughs> yeah, so, like, because of, like, so how the map's oriented, you know, the shrine is pretty wide open, right? Mm -hmm. But if you get pushed out and into the rest of the jungle, it's really choky and narrow and just uncomfortable, right? Well, that's where Malph and Tassadar do their best. So right. we're already saying we're going to push you out, and then when you try to retreat, we're going to reach you, and we're going to force wall you. Mm -hmm. Like so, it's it's a pretty much it's looking really well into our favor in drafts so far. Okay, yeah, I would agree. Uh, so they actually make an interesting ban here, which I, I wanted to ask you about. They they ban out uh, ban out Falstad. Uh, you already have a you know obviously he's got global, he's ranged, but you already have a ranged assassin. So they, uh, uh, do you know why what that's about? I honestly don't understand the band too much. I think maybe just because I'm on the team, maybe they're like. Yeah, you're a Falstead player. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, it, it was puzzling to me too. I was like, but they have Vala. Like, what do you? Okay, you know. Um, if they're just gonna go some other way, then they're just gonna have control of the shrine still. So like, it doesn't really do anything. Right. 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 Okay. Well. I mean, you need some frontline at this point, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They should have been banning tanks here tanks, or yeah. melee. I think, I think honestly, for them, like looking at our comp, like if you have double support, you usually have to run two DPS. Like you can't run double support, double tank. You just will not have any DPS. And I can't think of any drafts like that that's happened um, recently. That's usually what you do, want to do is if you run double support, you have to have two DPS and one tank. Um, Otherwise, you just won't have the damage, right? So they should have been banning out melee assassins here, I think. Right. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that makes sense for sure. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys do ban out the Sylvanas, uh, so can you tell yeah. us about what's what what the Sylvanas ban is for. Um, so basically, like, uh, our early game is a little bit weaker because Vala doesn't really take off the four, and neither does Tassadar. So we were worried about a little bit about that first shrine, you know. We mm -hmm. didn't want to get let them have that first shrine, and then Sylvanas just takes the whole map away from us, right? And we never right. have a chance to fight on the same level tier. And she's just really good on this map. She has lots of poke with her W. She has decent shrine clear. And even if like let's say like we somehow do get the shrine from them, Sylvanas can just go take a wall somewhere. Um, right. And that's and and that's. The, this yeah. is what we should have done last draft again. Like we have the superior ball, right? Mm -hmm. We need to make sure they don't just run around on us all the time. Right. And Sylvanas is pretty much your only enabler for that type of play. Mm -hmm. um, that's any good and competitive, right? Like you could you can pull out Azul sometimes, right? And, and make it work. I mean, Ga Gazlo can Sylvanas. go kill a wall, but that doesn't mean you yeah. need to bang. <laughs> yeah. But, so does so yeah, does Asmodan. I mean, there's a whole bunch. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's exactly, she's but legit she's though. Oh, yeah, okay. she's the real deal. Yeah. She she gets she gets it done. She, she does, done. for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, I, I like how you're just po poking down my Gazlo there, dude. Uh, I mean, dude, your Gazlo is really good, actually. I like it. Thank, There's thank one you. dude I see in here league all the time who picks Gazlo, and I'm like, all right, man, just he carries me sometimes, yeah, straight yeah. up with his with his ults. I'm just like, all right, just do your thing, man. Yeah, I right. I was watching. I think I was watching Chu last night, and he he got carried by the same Gazlo twice. And I like Chu's a pretty good Gazlo, but this guy, I was like, 
wow, this guy is like he's on another level. Really good with Gaslo. Like, holy crap! As soon as they buff Gaslo, you're gonna see these guys be like world champions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be like horse pants as Artanis. Yeah, like, you know. yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so what happened then? Ben Falstead, Ben Savannah. So you, uh, they pick up Gul'dan and Tychus. And the yeah. Gul'dan is an interesting choice here. Obviously, it's good for the uh, for the monkeys. Um, and uh, Tychus, um, you don't have a tank yet, so I thought the Tychus pick was interesting. But of course, you're gonna have to get one at some point. Yeah. But so, what, what do you think of those picks? They're two really good picks from Infernal Shrines. Uh, Gul'dan's pretty good. Tychus is pretty good. Also, like, the gul'dan Oriel synergy is pretty high. And then also the etc Tychus synergy is pretty pretty high, too. Because if right. you can CC someone for the minigun, you know, someone's going to die. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I like I liked the Tychus. Both of his alts seem viable on this map, depending on the situation. Yeah. Um, which I think is a, a nice thing. Just so many of the heroes, mm -hmm. the pit rates are... Definitely lopsided, right? Yeah. yeah. For me personally, for because I main Tychus, I mm -hmm. I look at um so like this comp I would definitely go Odin just because Drill is just going to get killed and it's and they're just going to like kite away from it or something. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to get like a dive comp, I would definitely take Drill. Um, right. Because well, yeah. Well, no, go ahead. Oh, um, was... just because like you know Odin, whenever you cast it, you're kind of froze. You're yeah, stunned cast there. Cast time. You can't move. So you like your team's kiting back, and you're like, "Wait, guys, wait for me." Yeah. Hold on, I'm turning into a robot. Hold on. Well, and like like you mentioned though, right? Once you get out of the shrine area, there's a lot of choke points, which Odin is really good for, right? Yeah, yeah, because you have two uh, abilities that are like AOE, AOE and do a lot of yeah. damage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, uh, Tychus is just really good hero most of the time. So yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, and you guys round out your team with Johanna and Thrall. Yep, and basically it's the same principle, you know. Go earthquake on Thrall, and you just body them off the shrine. They, you know, they're going to be seventy percent slow. They can't move. They can't come at you. They can't really retreat. So we just get to do whatever we want. And then the Johanna pickup. Um, I think it was just die who's more comfortable in that than Muradin. Oh. Okay. Uh, like Muradin, Muradin's all right on this map, but again, it, you know, it's the same principle as before. Like you can't really throw stuns on the shrine because of the the guardians there, like mm -hmm. ETC can. Yeah. So it's a little awkward. Uh, well, and the good wave clear. I also liked it because you, the Titus just can't chew through her like uh, like a murder. Right? Yeah, right. Johanna is a soft counter to to, to Titus because you know you have condemned stun for his Q and then you have blind for his D. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention you know now you have a pretty beefy front line, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think that they should have banned off the thrall instead of the false dad. I when I looked at this yeah. comp when yeah. I was watching it, yeah. I really thought and, the thrall was going to be the pickup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely should have bound out some type of melee assassin there. Because mm -hmm. they knew that we had to pick it up. Like, we had to pick up a melee assassin there. We can't run um, right. double tank. So now when they go to pick up their fifth, when I watched the draft, they took their time. Do you think that they were deliberating quite a bit? And, and... Yeah, they, they, they do pick up like, Dahaka. Like, like, yeah. yeah, they well, do pick up Dahaka, which is a good pickup for them. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they had multiple options here? Or do you think that that was just the best one that they could come up with? It was definitely, I think, the best option for them. Uh like we don't have a global and they do which is a huge advantage for them and then also actually the hawk has decent uh clear on the guardians too with his w it's not a bad pickup right it's yeah. a little awkward though with his q stun again like the same principle as murden his, his... Uh, i think oh yeah. go ahead no no finish please no I, I think he does like in the game like actually stun uh, like a guardian a couple of times oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard not to do yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but his... just just like the lee main <laughs> yeah, yeah. His uh his brush stalker is uh, obviously not as not as good on this map um versus others. I mean it's it's decent because it is a tall map, but it, it's not like Warhead or something. Uh, but yeah, yeah. his, his uh, uh primal aggression at level one is actually really strong here. Um, so I get that. But looking at these comps, um, the one thing that stands out to me actually besides leeching plasma and stuff is earthquake executioner with Vala. I, mean, I, I don't know if that's what Vala took, but that's what I'm like when I see that I'm like oh my gosh, all that executioner proc. Uh, is that what she ended up doing, or? Or wait, they they took off Executioner from sixteen on Bala after the rework. Oh, yeah. wow. She has a new talent Manticore at sixteen. Manticore, um, Manticore. which which every third attack is like five percent. Okay, okay. Um, My which bad. I do think she ends up taking this game. So, like, if you were going like, um, she kind of went like a W high like auto attack hybrid build, which isn't bad because it's oh, okay. you know you want the wave clear on the shrines, but then you also have a Tassadar. Um, so it works. Yeah. Okay, cool. I but thought she, she went, still uh, had strafe. Yeah. yeah, she went strafe, which was which pairs off really well with earthquake. 
Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. You yeah. can't escape that. That's that's yeah. a, that's probably better synergy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, plus, I like Earthquake uh, picked up with the with the Malfruits too, right? I mean, you yep. can pretty much have your pick of who you want. Malfruits are really easy to cast. Force Balls are really easy to cast. Yeah. Like it, it synergizes a lot with uh, like Earthquake is like really good right now because it synergizes with a lot of heroes that are in the meta. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I was surprised at just how much it's taken over too. Like, I was mm -hmm. expecting kind of like a sometimes you go Sunder, sometimes because Sunder was always like Sunder is the ult, you know, like it's yeah. Sunder, and now everyone's like like Sunder. What? No, that spell's terrible. What are yeah, you talking there was about? Like that awkward, <laughs> there was like that awkward week where like no one was playing Thrall. Everyone thought he was dead, and then yeah. people started playing like more and more Earthquake Thrall. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you just play him a little bit different. You don't like just run at people in Sunder. You. You kind of play like in and out a little bit, right. and he's really taken off. Like he's he's really strong right now. Yeah. Yeah. When I look at your comp here, I mean, I just see beefiness everywhere, right? You've got the mm -hmm. double support. You got the frost resilience on thrall, and I mean, it's pretty hard to kill you guys, right? I mean, they yeah. don't have an enormous amount of stuns to do it, especially Burst, yeah. like you talked about with the with the Haka uh, hitting the guardians. I mean, it, see, this draft seems like a pretty clear win it looks like a blow how you yeah. how you felt like mm -hmm. yeah um so we felt really strong um they actually played the early game really well like yeah. i mentioned earlier before the the etc tychus synergy early mm -hmm. game and um it, it worked really well for them uh because johanna you know the biggest thing about johanna is all you have to do is body block her and she you know she can't get out and that's what right. that's basically what they did to her is they just body blocked her and they got a few picks on her i think thrall struggled a little bit because of the dahaka tongues mm -hmm. um so they played the early game really well but late game we just ran away with it because they just couldn't they couldn't compete with our shrine clear and our sustain mm -hmm. yeah For, yeah it definitely uh the uh the thing that looks that stands out to me about as far as, yeah, like he was saying, a double support comp versus a double tank comp, and uh, they really lack burst, um, and they're, and and you have mouth heals with a shield just in case, you know? So, like, it's going to yep. be really hard to kill you guys. Uh, obviously, they did early game, like you said, um, but, yeah, to me, that's what it looks like. So Plus, the, there were a couple points in the game where it seemed like maybe you don't, we were a little too aggressive, and they did yeah. take advantage of that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there's, uh, there's basically we had like an immortal pushing on like yeah. level twenty two immortal pushing on their keep, and we just like ran at them and threw. We still won the game, but right, it right. definitely well, you, should have been over like point, three minutes earlier. <laughs> well, you did have an enormous lead when you did that though, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, those were the two drafts we're going over tonight. Um, we're gonna give away another Ragnaros, and uh, what, what do you got going on in the near future, Raffle? Um, so basically I'm just going to be streaming and, and what's your, uh, what's your Twitch? That? Oh, my Twitch is, uh, not Rafflecopter. Not Rafflecopter. <laughs> there you go. So go ahead and give Raffle a follow for sure. Watch his stream. Uh, yeah. Get head on over there. Um, yeah, sorry. Do you have plans to come back to the, to the competitive scene yes. long term? So my overall plan, and this was going to be the plan from the beginning, but you know, like I said, the whole pressure from, mm -hmm. you know, the only top eight and everyone asking me and stuff or whatever. But uh, so basically, just do dorm in the spring, finish mm -hmm. out my my uh, education, and then in the summer, um, get back on a professional team and hopefully be in the HGC. Nice, awesome. Yeah. Yep. Well, we hope you well, do. Well yeah, we'll definitely be rooting for you. We'll be at Dorm and uh, do a lot yeah. all the way through that process for sure. Yeah, Thank we'll, you. We'll be at, at Heroes of the Dorm here at the last one. It was probably my favorite event I've ever been to. It was I love really? Heroes of the Dorm. Yeah, thought it was Sweet. great. Yeah. Uh, all right, so type in that chat. Have we got any more? A couple stragglers coming in. No, no, we're good. Okay, let's see who wins. The winner of the final Ragnaros is Zalrons, LOL. So even though you have League of Legends in your name, I'll give you the skin. It's all right. <laughs> Maybe he's laughing out loud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, the L, second L's capitalized, man. I know. Bust, I, was trying, busted. I was trying to be. Trying. <laughs> all right. So the congratulations on that skin. Uh, so we did give away five Ragnaroses tonight, which I love doing. Um, it's awesome that we got to do that. Thank you so much to Blizzard and the Blizzard community team. Thank for, you very much. For, for giving us those codes. Um and for supporting us uh, in this little little draft project show thing yeah. we do. So, yeah. Thanks um, for joining us, Ralph Dropter. You're a great guest. This is, uh, thank you. Really, we really liked having somebody who, who was in the draft kind of break down the thought process. And, yeah. and I think you did a really good job of explaining yes. it. And of also um, 
admitting your, mis- your mistakes in the draft, which is really, yes. like we talked about earlier, even more helpful for an educational point of view. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, it's actually really nice that those two drafts kind of like mirrored themselves. I think I think the Infernal Shrines draft was basically what we did right and what we should have done in the uh, the Braxis draft. Right. Yeah. Great. Yeah, probably. Um, so Ryan, there's an important question though. Uh oh. I'm I think I'm about I think I'm about to do some placements. Oh. Now are, are you are you gonna be smart and not do them with me? Or are you going to be dumb and do them with me? I don't, I don't know. I just. I mean, out. they'll be team league placements, but still. Well, still obviously, yeah. Because we can't do a trade yeah. into yeah, normal yeah. hero league anymore. But. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna play a little heroes. So yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. To yeah. This thank you. Show. It was awesome. Yeah. For yep, sure. Again, thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, and no, thank good you. Good luck in your placements. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and you know, uh, anytime you're looking to, you know, maybe get out some community content out there, you want to come back on again, please just let us know. We'd love to have you. Yeah. All right. Drop thank some you. more knowledge on us for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Man. Thanks. Yep. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. All right. Good show. Good show.